sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grumpy. No, we're not dwarfs today. I'm Cindy. I'm Lou. And we're Faking Sanity. Most every day. Yeah. <laughs> every single uh, day. We run a bookshop, yarn shop in Dawson Creek, BC, Canada. Yeah. And, and we do this podcast. And this is our, yeah, knitting and it's spinning podcast. Knitting, spinning, and stuff podcast. Yes. Uh, I welcome. have lots of stuff today. You do have lots of stuff today. Yeah. I have lots of... <laughs> no proof of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. Okay. Um, you start. Okay. Shall we start with finished items? Oh, you have finished I have, items. So do you. You have spinning. Oh, right. Um, I was thinking she was bragging. So it's been forever since we podcasted because when we did the podcast, it then like took us two weeks to get it up. But um, so oh, I've, then we were sick. I got, oh, yeah, yeah. We've been sick and blah, 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 la, 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 la. Okay, so I've actually got quite a bit of knitting done. Yes, I you finished a, a bunch, bunch of stuff. Of Catalyst hats. Um, this is my pattern, C A L L I S. This is it in bulky. And DK. Oh, yeah. It's it's that one's for a kid. So this one's for a kid, but my head mm -hmm. is more kid size. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, I actually knit three of these for <laughs> a family. Um, this is the color of the other one. I've already given it to her. Uh, I just have to weave in ends and stuff, but she was thrilled with it too. She yeah, was she wearing it. it when she came in, and she said, yesterday. "She said everybody's been asking her where she got it, and she keeps telling them here." And I'm like, "Oh, I'm sick of this pattern. I don't want to knit it again. I've knit it like seven times, I think." <laughs> yeah, but that's all right. That's all right. Maybe I can convince people to knit their own. It's a fun knit. It is. We it could is. do it's a really class quick. for it. Well, Jocelyn. Oh, she didn't actually end up doing the class for it. Yeah. Anyway, it it's a cute yeah. pattern, so, and it looks nice in the DK. This is the bulky version. It is in Faking Sanity Soulless Chunky. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Okay, it's Soulless, as in S-O-L-A-C-E, but I always think of it as Soulless. <laughs> it's the Soulless Chunky. <laughs> I was wondering chunky. why you were laughing. I was laughing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, and I love this yarn. Yeah, it's very squidgy. It is so squidgy. But it works, this pattern also works really good in like a, like Malabrigo Chunky, Mal, Mal Chunky is a bit thicker. Yeah, gives it a bit stiffer, like yeah. denser fabric. But I really like it. So I did, uh, this is Green Eggs and Ham, the colorway, and I did it in The Fault in Our Stars. We name all our colorways after books. And this one is... Is, is in the DK Worsted, uh, DK Worsted. DK Whimsy. DK Whimsy. Also our yarn. The, yeah, Faking Sanity, DK Whimsy. Uh, it is green grass running water. That's the um, colorway. Yeah. So I knit lots of hats. I really like it in the single. I wasn't sure that the pattern would show up well in a singles yarn, but it shows up very nicely. Yeah, I was, I was pretty impressed. Yep. Um, this one drove me nuts. This was the last <laughs> one I did. This was my third try because I was trying to downsize it for uh, like... He's about 12, a 12 year old boy. Um, and so it has to be a bit smaller than this one. But not this one's tons. quite a loose one, yeah. but not tons smaller. So I knit it once and it was like this size. And then I knit it again and she couldn't get it onto her head. Yeah. And then I finally, so this one's just right. <laughs> I tried it on the other night Hopefully. and Last it, night. it came up to here and yeah. she's like I guess I'll take her the crown and add yeah. another Luckily the crown's only like eight rows yeah. or something. So yeah, yeah I finished that last night. So I have a hat trick. I did three of these. I also finished the cool hat hat that I showed on last week, oh, last yes. time's podcast. So I actually knit For four hats. Yeah, but when we get to the bingo I have some highlights. <laughs> okay. Um, my F O's are only spinning because I finished absolutely no knitting. Mm -hmm. um, but I had shown one of these before and I finally finished the second of my bamboo spins. I love, like, I love the drape of bamboo. It is um, pretty, like, pretty. You know, I can talk. Well, droops a little, but she's bamboo like asleep just, and like, I'm just like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> That's because I can talk better in my sleep than you can wake. <laughs> anyway. Yes, this is bamboo uh, from Louette back when they did fiber. Louette had bamboo? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh! Uh, so it was their 100% bamboo. I forget the colorway name because the bag got tossed hard. about eight years ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a fun spin. And now um, it's about sport weight, um, bordering on DK. Is that one washed yet? 
Uh, what well, this one is? This oh, one okay. isn't. That's why it looks a little fuzzier. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, yeah it's softened up a little. So I'm. I think I might sell those. Um, but I'm not sure. I wanted to finish Maybe. both of them to decide if I wanted to keep them for myself or not. And Pippi Longstocking. She had red hair. Pippi Blue Stocking. She was Fifi Brancy. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> that looks really cute. <laughs> Sorry. You look more like a cabbage patch. But... <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, my other FO. Cool. I get to talk about an FO now. You, you talked about all your hats and... But I have more FOs than you. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> I have another she one of these. She slapped me. Do you see that, Terry? It's abuse. You need to come back. Oh, yeah. My mom has left on her annual trek to Florida. And so Lou is staying at her place. Usually I, I house it, but Lou is this year. And it's... it's We, are, we always enjoy it because it's time away from each other. Yeah. We spend a lot of time together, so. Together. Except, of course, yesterday I went over there and we watched like eight episodes of NCIS. We'll get Not to that. Not that many. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, this is... You may recognize the pattern. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> it, it has a bit of change, but it is the Marigram pattern by um, Sweet Paprika Designs. Actually, by Debbie Sullivan is the designer. And I've done this twice before. Um, so, you've seen it in once a... Once in red and once in blue. Well, not red. It's kind of a pinky burgundy. Anyway, and then and <laughs> um, the same lady wanted both of those, and then she called me and asked, "Can you do one more?" Um, <laughs> and I did this out of the Art Fill uh, Ombre Merino, mm -hmm. which is a it's a gradienty yarn. Um, and I actually, I, I'm moving my pop so I don't I'm just it. moving the pop because it came dangerously close to getting tipped there. Meh. Um, I took out a couple of rows in the middle of the um, little garter um, oh, things because I knew that I didn't have quite enough yarn. And I actually, I, I ran out. Um, I had two rows and the bind off left. But luckily I was using Art Fill, one of their color bundles for another project. So I just stole some from the darkest color. Mm, right, because you had the gray set. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. looks really nice. I just have to weave in ends. I blocked it last night. I got to weave in ends. And then Sheila's picking it up tomorrow. You have ends everywhere. I have All ends those everywhere. have ends. I'm, that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm doing ends. Um, yeah, it's this cowl again. So I have knit this cowl three times. I have knit this hat seven, I think. Seven or so. I have knit the cool house, which I showed last time, like 12 times. I think this might be 13. I'm sure you were at 12 before. Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I need something new to knit. When she gets on a kick for a pattern she likes, she knits it a lot. Yeah, but then I get really sick of it. Yeah. But I really like these these uh, gradients. Yeah, it's a they good do. pattern so for strange. a gradient. Everybody loves gradients. Um, but we have a bunch of gradients and they're not selling at all. So I just keep knitting them up and then... Knit, knit them up as a shop the, sample, and shop the, samples are it. fabulous. Sorry if I do patterns that aren't supposed to be, but... Yes, I do shop samples, and then somebody goes, No, oh, I need that, it's so pretty! Yeah. Which is nice to hear, but yeah, so... There we There we Okay, now you can talk about your other one. Oh, my other one was spinning too. Yes! Um, so this is, oh, it was... So pretty! It was a new um, fiber for me. I got this as a gift. Um, was it a prize in something? Yes, last cool. summer. It, it was um, my, it was like a Christmas swap, but it was a gift one from oh. the Sweeties, uh, which was the spinning group I'm on on Ravelry, or used to be. I've run out of time for Ravelry lately. Really? I know. What weird, have you been eh? doing? I just, I Watching used to spend NCIS. four hours a day easily on yeah. Ravelry, and, and I don't anymore. Uh, but this is my new spin. It's from Humming Bee Farm. And it's a blend of merino, silk, and tencel. So I don't know if you can pick up some of the shine on this. Um, oh, it's so pretty. The merino isn't the finest merino, but then it's got the silk and tencel adds a little bit of shine and softens it up a little. And I yeah. love the colorway. Yeah. Um, and so, so it'll pretty. be like blocky stripes, big blocky oh, stripes. Oh, really? Because um, I did, so it goes from uh, the gray to the uh, blue to gray to purple to pink, yes. like the plummy color, yeah. um, three times through the course of the whole ball. Mm. So, yeah. Are you selling this one? Uh, 
probably. Oh. No, I have. I have. Too you much have of your... too much yarn. You have tons of my hands. On. I know. I know. I know. Um, and I haven't yeah. even measured this yet, so it'll go for we a soak to today. Still, yeah. Yeah. Um, it'll probably be a DK to worsted, um, and I would want it for a hat. But I feel like because it's stripy, like it would, it could be used mm. for a cowl or something bigger than a hat. Quite yeah. Nicely. yeah. I always hate to like not use every bit of yeah a nice hand spun yeah so yeah so that's that and mm -hmm. i love it it is so and pretty. it's not i didn't um i'm trying to be less anal i <gasps> didn't agonize over getting it super super even so it's a little more oh, thick and thin than it's usual so pretty. um it doesn't matter a little more thick and thin her hand spun is... usually like looks like commercial yarn so this I looks it. more hand spunny yeah a little bit yeah, I like it. It was a fun spin. Um, I need to look up their website and see what How many beads? what fibers they have. I don't even know if it's American or not. It was a really nice prize, though. Yeah. Gift. Okay, what should I talk about next? This? You have oh, another FO. I have another FO. <laughs> I learned how to needle felt. He's a, this little hedgehog. He's so cute. He's my first I think needle he needs to project. be rounder. Let's make him rounder. Boom. <laughs> He's my little hedgehog. He's supposed to have a Santa hat and a candy cane, but uh, since I'm pretty anti-Christmas, I was like, no, I think I'm going to give him little glasses mm -hmm. and, and call him Harold. And why Harold? From person of interest. <laughs> because everything has to tie back to a TV show oh, or obsession yeah. of some sort. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does. Not, not everything, but I am a nerd, so... You anyway, affected with Rebecca. Her, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Rebecca and I hers decided turned just, out great. Um, she did this this cow that is so adorable. It looks nothing like it was supposed to look, but it looks but it's so adorable. It's, it's really cute, yeah. and and she made it look like her cows. She has little. She has mini Highland cows. She has yeah, Dexter's and Highlands. Yeah. So, but yeah, so she put like the like the horns like this, and with the and little, little tuft of hair, tuft of hair here, and yeah, it was it was a Valentine's it was Day adorable. present. Adorable. And apparently, Murray loved it. So, oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So now she wants would. to now she wants to felt all the animals on her farm. <laughs> oh, I know what I need to do. I need to do little otters. All the hands, because otters are so cute. You and otters. I like otters. Yes, you do. What else you got? Well, I've got I've got a kind of weird one. So I brought these socks. You've seen them before. I knit them like last year. And Are they clean? Yep, yeah, they're clean. And they're like <laughs> before I put my them on my fave, hand. But the heels are wearing out. Okay, so this is um, Sea Turtle Fiber Arts Ridley sock, and yeah. I love knitting it. I love wearing it. It's in the um, Evil Twins. Uh, they're such cool colorways. I yeah. love them. But the heels are wearing out. And I don't darn. <laughs> darn so, it. Yeah, darn it. Um, so, so this is a 100% merino one, right? Like it's the no, eight, it's got some nylon. It's the eight ply, but no merino. The Ridley sock. Don't ask me that. I'm pretty sure it has nylon. Um, I anyway. think she's wrong. I'll check. It'll be in. Uh, we'll link to the yarn in the show notes anyway. Anyway. We never link. Right, well, we'll say what they are. And okay, find them. so what I decided is I am going to cut off the heels and do afterthought heels. Mm -hmm. That is my plan. Or, or, or I could just double stitch over them. Mm -hmm. So I brought this. It's commercial mitts, but my thumb had worn out and I had a big hole in the thumb. So last night I double stitched over it in this nice fluorescent green. I thought you were going to try Sachiko mending. I thought about it, but then I was like, oh, this is going to be easy. So <laughs> I double stitched over it. And where there wasn't actual stitches, I just created them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And so it looks so cute. I think this one is just starting to wear out. Oh, you can't tell at all. Yeah. But I think I'm going to do the same thing. Maybe I'll pick a different color. For I that think thumb. it's ironic that you went with a green thumb because you have I know, the I do blackest have a green thumb, thumb ever. Actually, oh, one of our, our uh, regulars. Regulars. Um, she was talking about we need to knit mitts with green thumbs. Like other colored mitts yeah, with like, just a green like thumb. A gray mitt with a green thumb. Because her friend did it for her and she's like the biggest gardener ever. And she said she gets so many comments on them yeah. that she works at a greenhouse green in the summer. She said, 
we should that, that we, we should, should design mittens that with green thumbs well, yeah, and sell them at the should, greenhouse. We should knit up some for her to sell at the greenhouse for. Her. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, uh, I have enough knitting to do. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, I'm too but, slow a knitter to take on commercial knitting. Yeah, but yeah, my green thumb. Uh, yeah, I I have like the blackest thumb in the world, but you do. maybe I'll do pink on this thumb. But yeah, so, so. <laughs> so you're going to do that for your heel? So I double could stitch double stitch it and then it would make it thicker too. But yeah. I, I'm worried it'll also make it like stiffer. A little, but on the heel, like it'd be extra cushioning But I was thinking heel. what I might start doing is I could actually, when I do the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, which is what I do on pretty much all my socks, yeah. I could actually double the yarn just mm -hmm. for the bottom of the heel. Yeah. So that it doesn't do that. Or I could get like... Um, or you could double knit it. Like actual double knitting. Like yeah. knit the front, pearl the back. So that the so ridges... So soft. Yeah. yeah. Um, or I could get a... Uh, Croy has a... We have the elastic. Not uh, the elastic. Oh, like we have the, the actual elastic. elastic. They have a reinforcement thread. Yeah. That I could hold double with it. But for now, I think I am just going to cut it out and do... A short row. A short row a heel, um, an afterthought heel on both of them. Because, like, look, holes. I mean, I do wear them a lot. You're going to do, like, a dark gray favorites. heel? I don't know. Uh, dark maybe, gray would look good with both of them. Maybe I'll do fluorescent pink. I don't know. Dark purple would but look yeah. good, too. What is it with you in pink lately? I don't know. I don't know. But um, She even grabbed a pink highlighter. I did. It was the first one. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, so I, it was sad, and also maybe I should learn how to darn. Yeah. But, meh. I don't like darning. But I want to get someone to teach how to darn socks at the Fiber Fest. Because, yes. okay, you guys are all knitters. Would you, I mean, okay, some of you might know how to darn already. But would you take a, like, you know, class at a Fiber Fest on how to darn? Darn socks or yeah. fix mistakes. Yeah. Well, not We've mistakes. done a fix your mistakes <laughs> class before. Don't. <laughs> um, I, yeah. could, I could do a class are... on just chopping it off and doing an afterthought heel. <laughs> you could. We but are... not everybody not everybody has the heel issue. Yeah. I really thought I'd, oh, there's, no, they're not bad on the toes. That's where I, I usually I wear, wear it out, out right, right here. here. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Or like right where my pinky nail goes through. Mm. But yeah. My saddest ones were a pair of socks I got in a sock swap we oh, did at yeah. our old yarn shop. And they were beautiful. And I wore them three times and blew out, like, from here to here, blew out pretty much entirely the third time I wore it. So I it was like, oh, it was too big. Like, by the time I got home that day, it was too big a hole to, like, it would have meant re -knitting the sole. Yeah. Which I could have done, but it was heartbreaking. So. Oh, yeah. Um, you want to talk about one of your whips? Sure. Let's do mm. let's do the one that's almost done. <laughs> sure it is. <laughs> so you've seen these many times because I keep putting them aside and only picking them up at knit night because mm. they're good knit night knitting. She was to right before the heel. So these are my um, socks. vanilla latte socks by. <laughs> I need to write it down this time. And I put it on the sheet that I put mm. over there. <laughs> <laughs> My Vanilla Latte Socks by Virginia Rose Jeans and Regia Perfect Partner Look. And they're in the sets that we partnered with their opposite. So I'm doing Oppo Socks. Um, so this one, I don't know if you can see. There we go. The stripes are on the top in grey and this one, the stripes are on the bottom in green. Um, because I decided I wanted them totally opposite. She didn't. I, I started didn't. knitting from the wrong end. <laughs> we left the, the little yellow tag that says start here, and I started at the opposite end. Yeah. So I'm intentionally going for it. Yeah. Opposite, opposite. Intentionally. <laughs> well, I intentionally chose not to rip it out. And start yeah, over. that's true. Anyway, um, <laughs> now that I'm past the heel, I'm like an inch. I've got maybe two inches of gray left, and then it'll get to the gray, green left, and, and it'll get, get to the gray for the cuff. So yeah. I will finish those this week. Yeah, she keeps saying that. I, I no, because I don't, I've stopped working on the project I was working on. Oh, that's on, true. So. You've got to talk about that one. Yeah. Like, okay. So I started something yesterday and I'm loving it, loving it, loving love it. Love those colors. It is a shawl. 
So it is the Smuggler's Cove Shawl by Kay Hopkins. Sorry, I only have black and white, so I can't show it to you really well, but it's this gorgeous shawl um, that has these mosaic pieces and it's not color work. I mean, okay, yeah, technically it is color work, but you only ever knit with one color yeah. and you only ever have to slip over one at a, uh, one stitch at a time of the other side. So the other side looks a little like it has floats, but, but not bad. And then it's got some lace, just some really like, basic Base eyelets. Yeah, staggered eyelets. Uh, it has garter. And then, so it is... And you're doing that out of a gradient, right? Yeah, it's so it's it's the green all the way through, which is Art Fill Bell in color, I think, Veritas. No, that doesn't sound right. No. I don't know. Anyway, this is pretty color that I've knit with before. <laughs> and then, um, oh, I guess not that color. Oh, it's a five color one, and I've already done the whitest. And then oh, these are the other colors. Yeah, so the all of gray. the all of the mosaic bands will be in a different in color. Different colors of gray. And oh, whoopsie! I love this yarn. Yeah, it's a nice, it's um, a nice squidgy yarn. Uh, it's the same as the gradient. Um, and you've used it for several projects. I've before. used it for loads. Uh, I did the angularity in it and Russell Street. I'm like something else. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I and I love the pattern. Um I am I am quite in love with uh Kay Hopkins now. <laughs> um she is the one who I've picked out a sweater pattern and a hat pattern to do at some point for myself. Oh right. Out of the holst. <laughs> yeah. She actually mm -hmm. gave us this pattern to knit yes. as a shop sample when she saw that we had purchased, um, that Cindy had purchased one of her Yeah, which is patterns. really, really, really sweet. And hopefully everybody will be intrigued. We've sold tons of the Russell Street pattern yeah. as I knit one. Shop samples are so nice because people can yeah. visualize it. Yes. Especially if they're yeah. not on Ravelry and they don't see the pictures of yeah. everybody. And just... Being able to see, oh, you can do that with these colors kind of thing. Yeah. Or the this yarn. And, yeah. yeah. So. Or, oh, that's how you'd wear this shape. Yeah. This one is a, just a big triangle, which is lovely. Um, I didn't used to like big triangles, like regular triangles. Shawls. So I started doing all of these asymmetrical triangle mm -hmm. shawls. And now I don't really like them anymore. <laughs> and I'm going back to big triangle shawls. Yeah. Big so. triangles are awesome. Yeah. Awesome possum. Okay. I have I have one other whip I can show. Oh. Um, there's not much to show yet, but <laughs> I okay, so I was working on a, a design idea um, that was a turtle a shawl, like a crescent shawl called the turtle lace shawl or turtle island lace shawl. Um, and I just didn't like, I wanted the turtle lace to be perfect and I didn't like any of the variations I came up with either. I didn't like the proportions of the head to the flippers or the, you know, the so body to the head. So she's been all of these samples. I knit and, like yeah. 18 different, I charted turtle, different yeah. 18 different turtle lace um, panels and knit them up and went, mm, no, not quite right. Tore it out, charted a new one, knit it, tore it out. And, and so I was getting frustrated because um, I want that one to be perfect because I feel strongly about it. Um, so instead I started something new. <laughs> um, so I'm knitting. So that's why she doesn't have a lot of stuff to yeah, show. Yeah, I have a bag of frogged red yarn. Yes. <laughs> I left that at home. It's looking, actually, it's looking really good considering how many times I've I frogged know. it. Um, it's I'm just knitting out of the, um, the determination. Yeah. I'm knitting it out of the leftovers from my hat that I did because um, that was enough to do the swatches. So I am knitting this new project out of Holst and it's going to be a five color project, uh, but it'll only look like three. So I'm knitting uh, one strand. It's a color work um, top down sweater and I'm going to do a uh, raglan sweater. And so the main color will be this um, black and gray together. That's the whole super soft slate gray and graphite. And then the lightest color is the silver and the iced together. And then I've got a 
uh, plummy purple called Imperial. As Imperial well. purple, yeah. Um, so right now, there's not much to show. There's not much to show because I ripped it out and started over. <laughs> so I've just got the collar. It's going to be a loose, like a really loose funnel neck. And then I've just got some uh, one by one offset. Uh, so there'll be a band of this. And then I'm going to do stripes along the shoulder. So it uh, visually kind of feels like a saddle shoulder. Oh. Um, so the sleeves will be striped down that way. And then I'll have like some more gray and then start a new panel after that. So I'm, I'm pleased with it now. Uh, now that I changed the increases over by the raglan, um, I didn't like what I had chosen before. So these are more invisible with the color work. So I'm, I'm happy. So this should have at least down to the armpits and finished raglans by the next podcast. You don't believe me. No, I don't believe you. Depends if I pick up that red yarn again or not. <laughs> but I really Give want up on to, the turtles. I really want to um, get this done too. So I think so this are will you going to do that as a pattern or are you just doing it for yourself? I, I'm doing it as a, I need to step away from the turtle right now. <laughs> okay. Um, and if it looks good, if I like it, it'll be a pattern. Um, and I'd just get the pattern written up and ask my tech editor to help with the grading, I think. Yeah. But yeah, because she does grading now, which is awesome. But I love how these colors look together um, when they're knit together. That's the the, um, the two grays. Two grays together. So it gives this nice, subtle, heathered look. Well, and they're already quite heathered. Y yeah. Well, the one is. The slate isn't super heathered. Nah. but. But I yeah, really when you like hold it. them together, it looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then the purple is a really bright pop, like almost, almost like this plummy purple, just mm -hmm. a bit darker. Um, so that'll be a sweater soon. Soon. Yeah. You know, by I'm next more realistic. Winter. I'm more realistic. <laughs> by next winter. Mm, I don't see it. Um, Unless she gets completely obsessed with it. Yes. I, I actually really like color work. Color work tends to be faster for me. Um, like I knit my cowls, the regular one and the bigger one in yeah. a couple of weeks each, yeah. which is unheard of. I don't finish anything in a couple of weeks, no. um, but color work keeps me more interested. I okay. find. So that's, well, that's my reason for no knitting and my new project to distract me from the frustration of no knitting. I'm just doing more socks. What a shock. It's my rainbowy socks. Rainbows. I love rainbows. Yeah. Jeez, I love rainbows. Okay. Where's that yarn from This again? yarn is Turtle Pearl. Right. Um, uh, turtle pearl, striped turtle toes. Um, it's a great yarn. She's out of Nova Scotia or New Brunswick. I cannot remember. Uh, she's got an Etsy shop though, and it's it's fabulous. Um, someone came to Knit Night, and she was working on she was making sock out of this colorway. And by the end of Knit Night, uh, four of us had ordered like fifteen skeins, something like that. <laughs> Um, that, that is beautiful. I yeah. love gray or black with a rainbow. It's and actually, this is like it's a bluey. Blue. Okay, so the co this colorway is called What Does It Mean? Um, but yeah, it's like this beautiful like blue sky color with the rainbow. Yeah. And it just worked out perfectly that the gray or the gray blue worked for my heel. And then I'll have like two rainbows on the foot. And I love the tiny feet. Yeah, I'm just doing my plain old boring... <laughs> um, socks with the fish lips kiss heel um, but yeah I love them they're rainbows they're really nice rainbows too like yeah. a lot of rainbows have like the red is a little too pinky or too orangey yes or the, these are like purl, it's like per purl, purl? perfect six color rainbows pre-newtonian rainbows pre-newtonian rainbows because <laughs> I'm a dork yeah I've been uh well I'll talk about that in culture consumed um okay uh what was my next thing that well you have um oh i have a stash acquisition it's yeah. just going to be my next project oh no 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 i have one more oh, yeah, you're working project this is so one of our knit night uh is a group of evil enablers um <laughs> yes and so yes they are well she talked about the time somebody came in with turtle pearl and everybody placed an order one time rebecca came in and said alison barnes is having a sale and we went yeah, yeah, we um, love Allison. So um, oh, I had that used, is spinning up gorgeous. Yeah, I had used pink. 
um, a bunch of her yarn before, but I'd never tried her fiber. So I ordered some of her fiber from this Knit Night um, acquisition. Yeah. We do this. <laughs> we start talking about something at Knit Night, and by the end of Knit Night, there's an order placed. Yeah. Um, so we ended up, this was um, her Merino Tencel, or no, um, Merino Bamboo. And it's a 50-50 blend. And the braid is like mostly white with big splotches of pink and purple and blue. Um, but because of the white, um, it kind of tones down the color and mutes it. So it's this beautiful pastel-y pink and purple and blue. And yeah, it's just, I wish I could focus. Hide my hand, uh, hide my face. Is that gonna focus? Oops, sorry. No. It's not going to focus, but no, you can see the colors. The uh, but you can see the colors nicely. Um, and so this is um, ah, about fresh. a fingering weight single no. or or lace weight single to make a fingering weight yarn. It's so pretty. Um, and I've I'm in the middle of spinning the second bobbin. It's about half done, and I've reversed the colorway, like spun from the other end of the braid. So I should get. Like pink plied with purple and oh, blue plied Barbary, with pink. Barbary pulley. Yeah. So it'll be a nice, subtle baby color. Not my usual colorway, but it feels like butter to spin. Her prep is so amazing and her dyeing is so beautiful. So I'm very pleased. That's Alson's. And then cool. we're going to see her yes. at the Fiber Fest. Yes. Hey, I wonder if she's bringing fiber. Did she bring fiber last year? No. Bru lots she of brought yarn. yarn. I'm not sure if she's bringing fiber. I still have yarn of hers that I have to knit from the Fiber Fest. And then I ordered some on that. Yeah. And then I know I will buy some more this year. Yeah. Oh, it was itchy. Sorry. Um, at the Fiber Fest, it was really crazy last year and we didn't get much time to shop ourselves. But Allison's booth was the one right next yeah, to ours. Yeah, basically I was staring at her stuff <laughs> as I was ringing people through. So we both got a fair amount of Allison Barnes's yeah. stuff last year. Yep, yep. Okay, my last thing I've been working on, it's, oh, it's right. not yarn. But it's a stitch. <laughs> it looks so funny. I'm it's just doing it around the outside. Um, okay, but it here. is. Oh. It is this picture. And it's so funny because I saw this and I was like, it's Aslan. It totally is. It's literally the picture they used on the on the book cover. movie poster and book cover for Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe when the movie came out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it looks pretty. Stitching. Um, You're I, really doing a lot of cross stitch lately. I well, lately, but this well, one, yes. Like you've done a couple of big projects. Of yes. Well, this stitch. is my second big project. The the other one was two years ago. Well, you started the trees a little while ago. Oh too. yeah, but it, it was kind of boring. Mm. But I love the really. I ha always have this image of my head of cross stitch being these like little pastels and like little people and stuff, and I just love the really vibrant. Um, crazy ones yeah so yeah we actually had a customer come in a week or two ago and he came in with a bunch of like star, oh, wars, star wars cross stitches ones they like were really cute bb8 as an outline with a desert scene in the back and like had inside Ray and bb8 and... walking in yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, they were really cool yeah. so that's that's i have been putting a lot of time into this just because i don't know i find it really soothing it's like spinning for and me see i started because everybody said oh you should start from the inside and work outwards and I did like one color and then and I was like, I don't like that. And I started on the outside. Well, and I mentioned that I always make less mistakes if I start from the outside. Yeah. When this I is my stitch, first so. actual counted cross stitch. The really? other one. Oh, they the other all one had the painted was, design. Was printed on. Yeah. So I <laughs> don't know if you can see, but I've been using pencil to outline where colors yeah. go. <laughs> that's um, not counting. That's drawing. Yeah. 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 You can see the pencil marks. Um... Because otherwise, I'm. It, it's much easier to do while watching TV. Yes. This way. As opposed to recounting after every stitch. Every, every stitch, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's going to be fabulous. I am loving it. Are you going to frame that one for your room? or? Yeah, probably. It's going to be for me, anyway. Yeah. It's not a gift this time. <laughs> okay. I got a gift. Did you? That was my stash um, enhancement this oh, week. Yes. Um, oh, yes. So, so pretty. I so just want to smoosh it. Yeah. Don't touch mm. it with your sandpaper hands, though. Sorry. Um, so, all last year I was spinning pretty much exclusively um, uh, Honui, Honui Wool Blend, or Honui Wool on its own from Heavenly Wools. And 
that was part of an ambassadorship program she had. Um, so I got the fiber for free in exchange for talking about it, which was no hardship because I love her fiber. and Because she was already talking about it for 90%, the years before. Yeah, 90% yeah. of my spinning budget goes to her shop. Um, <laughs> but as a thank you for everybody who did the program, she sent a gift um, and she asked kind of what colors you like best. And I said all the dark jewel tones. So she sent me this one, which is called High Notes, which is like deep purples and greens and the red and it's the honui wool mixed with mulberry silk and oh. it is so so soft it's it going to be so amazing pretty. amazing so to pretty so this one's going to be for me yeah um you just wrap it around your neck wear it like that okay yeah that is beautiful go. i made myself a cowl <laughs> <laughs> It is so nice. It's, it's amazing. I love her fiber. Yeah. Um, much like Allison's, like her prep is amazing and it just feels like butter to spin. Mm -hmm. But I especially love the Honui is a really nice breed of sheep. And I don't know if you can tell, but she dyes on the darker, like this is dyed on the darker fleece, not on white. So you get so many variations in the, like the darker colors just have so much depth and yeah. and stuff to them. I love it. I love it. Her dyeing is fabulous and I love the breed. So this will be my spin after my Allison Barnes yarn. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So you've been back in the spinning. You got your spinning mojo back. Yeah. Because you lost your knitting mojo. Well, yeah. But also I ordered a spinning wheel. <gasps> yeah. It'll still be a couple months, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think his his he builds them to order like so. I think he said it's two to three months right now. Mm. Um, but the Daedalus spinning wheels. Um, so he's one of the companies uh, that does the three D printed wheels, and he's had a little Starling, which is a little bit bigger than our electric eel wheel mini spinners, um, which we have. I actually I'm going to do a class at the Fiber Fest on those, like an intro to spinning. So that this is another three three D printed one. It is. Oh, for some reason, I thought it was a wooden one. It's a bigger one. Yeah. Um. So he has the little one, and then he's got this new one. Uh, so that's the Starling, and then he's got the Starling XL, and this one's called the Magpie. <laughs> I hate magpies, but <laughs> the wheel you can switch from Irish tension to Scotch tension back and forth, and it's got an iron fly or two, which I didn't get. I just got the basic one. But I really love as the bobbin gets heavier. You could switch tension. The fact that you can switch to really light tension or really a much stronger pull, huh. even in the middle of a, a spin. Um, so I'm really intrigued by that and I really love the idea. And since I didn't love my new wheel when I got it, my Ashford, I loved my first Ashford. But my new one just didn't quite click the same way. So Aww. I'm hoping that this one will be my my wheel again, okay. you know. Or you can go beat up Janet and take back. <laughs> <laughs> no. She I did, sold her first Ashford. I first I sold my first Ashford to a regular um, because I loved it. And I thought they had a new one that was a bit smaller and it'd be perfect for traveling with. But in the end. You don't travel. Well, I know it was a silly thing. Yeah. But I thought I could upgrade. She'd get a wheel at a yeah. discount. It'd be great. But I didn't love the new one as much as the Aww. old one. So. Oh, well. Yeah. But, and now I've got the little electric eel wheel for yeah. if I want to travel. So. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, um, I don't know if you guys are doing it, but it's the Thinking Sanity Bingo Mow. Bingo along. Bingo along. Just sounds weird. <laughs> that would be a ball. <laughs> um, so. Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I started. Oh, why? Oh, you're filling in the ones that you, okay. She's filling in her, her squares. So I've done a few. I've got the face fears, master new skill, which is my color work mitten, a uh, hat trick, three trick, three callous hats. Uh, use a pattern you've used before. That wasn't a very hard one for me. I yeah. one of the marograms. <laughs> um, Canadian designer was another one of the marograms and, oh no, sorry. Use a pattern you've used before is the cool hats. And then use Canadian yarn or fiber is one of the marigrams. Um, actually, both of the marigrams were Canadian. Yeah, um, they're both from Montreal. Yeah, they're well. Yeah, it's a, the designer and the and the yarn um, are from Montreal. So yeah, and then I've got a couple more that will be coming. I've got the Accept Failure Frogger Project. Um, <laughs> so last podcast, I showed the cozy up mystery knit along. 
I gave up on it. It just wasn't my thing. Yeah, well, and especially since you hate sewing and finding out that you had pieces to put together afterwards, right? Yeah, and I just, it, it just wasn't what I was in the mood for. Yeah. Uh, I got about halfway through the first clue um, and was like, no, no, I'd rather use a yarn for other things. And I mean, I've seen some of them and they're beautiful. Yeah. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to frog that. I haven't highlighted it yet because I haven't actually frogged it. And then I've got my toasty toes. I'm working on my socks. So once they're done, that'll be it. And yeah, and then my um, Smuggler's Cove shawl could fit quite a few different ones. Yeah. Uh, make something for yourself. Or fingering um, weight yarn. Fingering weight yarn, shawl or cowl, um, mini skeins, and color work. So I'm not too sure where I'm going to put it in. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm not really working on a line because um we don't qualify for prizes anyway. anyway. Um, but I'm trying to. I might I might finish this one, this line here, because charity project. I always knit some charity hats. Yeah. And then um, the besties, you and a friend make the same thing. And we uh, often knit. I a decided that together. it didn't have to be at the exact same time. And I am knitting her pattern for which I have knit a couple of times. Winter hug shawl. That's what it is. Um, yeah, basically, the rules are pretty laid back on this. If you can make the claim that it fits, yeah. it fits. Oh, so truthfully, I'll have this line, because um, I'll have my, my socks there, and then a fingering weight yarn project is uh, <laughs> Anything else lot. that you do. I have a lot of fingering weight uh, yarn. <laughs> I always I buy fingering weight yarn because... It's the easiest to find something to do with. Well, you and can knit a one, hat, a cowl. Uh, well, and one skein can do... A multiple of options. Pretty much everything. A lot of other weights of yarns, you want to get a couple skeins, and I'm not, ha I don't have a whole lot of money, so. You're becoming cheap yeah. like me. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I could put him in somewhere. Yeah. Mm. It, we specifically no, said no, 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 it was no, no, um, no, no, no. make along, because if you can mm. make a project from oh, another craft oh, fit. It would be um, yeah, besties. You and a friend make the same thing. We did needle felting. We didn't make the same guy. Or Blank made me do it. Rebecca oh, made me Rebecca do it. Oh, Rebecca made me she, do it. She picked out hers and then was like, Somebody so I don't, know, to do me. I don't know how to do needle felt. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, well, we'll learn together. So, yeah. I think that's a good Rebecca made <laughs> me do it. <laughs> okay. I'll put that in. This later. was my bingo one. I was coloring when she was talking about hers. So, we don't qualify for, for prizes, but it's fun to play along. So, I've got the uh, used plant fiber. Um, I'm doing the other bingo card. So use plant fiber is my bamboo spin. And then a uh, shawl or cowl was my second um, Aurora Polaris cowl I did that I showed last time in the bigger size. <gasps> you filled in the Alison Barnes one and you're not done it yet. Oh, cheater, um, cheater. LGBTQ yarn fiber or designer. I put Callous Light, uh, which is Cindy's pattern. And uh, new to you yarn or fiber was the hummingbird spin um, mm. that I did. And then this is the one that I will finish tonight uh, sure. for spinning and probably by Friday or Saturday the ply. Yeah. Uh, which is the Alison Barnes yarn uh, fiber. Fiber, yeah. So I'm really, I'm having fun with it. It's nice to well, have a no pressure, like work on what you want and then see where then, it fits yes. in. Yeah, or go. Oh, I need to make something out of fingering weight yarn. Well, that's not going to be a problem. Yeah. So I, I, once there's a deadline or a, you have to do this, it feels like work to me. Yeah. So we tend to yeah. have pretty open. Well, this one I had ten days to do it. Yeah. And that felt a little worky. Well, especially since we got sick in the middle of it, and I was just like, I slept. Not knitting. Yeah. We came in and tried to open and went, uh, this isn't going to happen. And I went home and I slept till eight o'clock that night yeah so I didn't well I did actually and then I sat up and finished knitting it but yeah so I'm not taking any more commissions yeah for the next little while I'm gonna knit what I want to knit yeah so that's the fun way yeah shall we move on to culture consumed sure are you guys sick of us yet <laughs> <laughs> too bad battling for 45 minutes too bad okay we'll talk oh, you quick. brought show and tell. I actually brought things to show for culture oh. consumed um, so I, I've been reading a bunch, so I, I decided I'm trying to either read 50 pages a night or listen to two hours of a, of an audiobook. So I'm getting through stuff. <laughs> so I started, well, 
I'm not going to talk about everything I've read, but I started. She's like me. She reads like five or six different things at the time. All the time. Yeah. So I was listening to an audiobook. Can't really show those. So it's called Arabs, um, a 3000 year history of peoples, tribes and empires. That one sounds fascinating. By Tim McIntosh Smith which was really fascinating. Um, and it was read by, what's his name, Ralph Lister, who I've listened to, he does a lot of history mm. audiobooks, and he's quite good. A good reader makes a big difference. Yeah, and I don't know how well he pronounced. Uh, you see a lot of the comments on on history books in Audible are like, oh, this guy butchered all of the pronunciations. Most things I can't tell anyway. So as long as, you know, they make sense. I'm good. I have no idea how he was, but I really, really enjoyed it. It was like a 24, 25 hour book and I read it really quick. In 25 um, hours? Well, no, actually faster than that because I oh, listened at 1.25. Um, yeah. So then, I don't know, that kind of got me on a Middle East uh, kick. Yeah. This so one looks this, fabulous too. This book came into the store and I had to grab it. It's called Spies of No Country um, by Maddie Friedman. Uh, behind enemy lines at the birth of the Israeli Secret Service. Um, so it was really interesting. So it was about um, Arabic speaking Jews from like Syria and Lebanon. Um, Arabic? What did I say? Arabic. Arabic. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say Arabic Jews. Arabic. Ah, sorry. Arabic. It's really bad because in this, he's been announced, pronouncing. Arab in a couple different ways to distinguish between oh, the like different groups. Arab the the like the linguistic community and Arab the the old meaning of Arab mm. and yeah so sorry okay Arabic speaking Jews from um uh, yeah you got me off thanks sorry from like Syria and Lebanon who at just before Israel became a state became um. Well, they were kind of spies. Spies is a weird word for it, but basically they lived in um, in the countries around Palestine um, and passed information to the the people who were becoming the Israeli state <laughs> um, because they could pass as uh, Arabs because they, yeah, anyway really really fascinating um it's basically just it's not the whole story of it but just about these four guys um sort of a look behind the scenes not an overview of the whole exactly well and then i was like okay i'm a little lost on thing some things because i don't know any of the history of israel so this is my new audiobook <laughs> it's called israel a concise history of a nation reborn <laughs> by Daniel Gordis, and I'm just I'm about four hours in. Uh, really interesting. Um, lots of things I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. So right now it's just talking about the Zionist movement, like before Israel became a state. Um, I'm finding it really fascinating. And actually, one of the really interesting things about the Arab one is it's written by a guy living in Yemen. Um, and he's talking a lot about, like, he makes a lot of references. He's writing it while Yemen is, like... Oh, in the midst in of... In the midst of a civil war, uh, fighting, like, outside his window. He can see fighting going on. And he's writing about the, you know, 3,000 years ago. But a lot of the parallels between what's been going on for thousands of years and what's going on now. And, and yeah, really, really interesting. So, apparently, I'm on a Middle East kick. So if you have any good reference or good recommendations, um, it's pretty, you know, not too biased or recognizes their biases, that'd be great. Um, I'd love to hear them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's been my, I don't know, my Middle East kick. So I, um, have you been reading? I, I've been audiobooking mm. um, because the frustration of tearing out yarn needed a distraction. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so and when I get into a TV show that I'm really into, mm. I tend to, like, I'm knitting, I'm knitting, and then I'm not knitting, I'm just paying <laughs> just attention. Watching. Um, so I wanted something mm. where I wouldn't stop knitting. So I've been listening to 
um, the John Green book I'd gotten, The Fabric of the Cosmos. And... No, that's Brian Green. Oh, uh, Brian Green. You've been listening to many Greens. That's the problem. You were yes. listening to Hank Green and yep. John Green and Brian, and Brian Green. Green. But his has an E. It is, yes. Anyway, um, it's really good. It's about um, multiple worlds, like the many worlds interpretation of quantum theory and how to tie quantum, like whether quantum gravity is the answer to unifying string theory and quantum Ooh. gravity. And Anyway, it's really fun. Um, he's definitely a string theorist. Yes. Um, so that's where his bias lies, um, which I'm... I'm not particularly sure about, but I don't understand all the, <laughs> yeah, all the intricacies. Nuance, yeah. Like I, I get it and I'm interested at this level. Yeah. All this is above my head. <laughs> um, but it's a really fascinating one. And he, he's really good at explaining to non-physicists the yeah. physics of stuff. And so he's talking in this book about how, like, if you interpret this version of this equation this way, you end up with many worlds that are... Um, like 10 dimensional membranes, which they just call brains, but, Ooh, um, brains. <laughs> but B R A N E. Yeah, okay. But if you, you know, adopt this interpretation of this equation and this, then you end up with multiple like bubble universes that all exist. And if you okay. adopt this in interpretation, so it's kind of cool seeing the, um, like the different ways alternate worlds or alternate realities can come from just interpreting these equations differently. Okay. Um, which I hadn't really gone into at all in any of my other science readings. So cool. that's been fun. And, and I've got um, like three hours left. So and I'm you just said he, he wasn't the greatest reader, right? He's an okay reader. He's but you like, I love his writing. Um, his reading was fine. He's just, I think he's more comfortable with writing. He's a good speaker. Yeah. But reading his book it's written in a way that's maybe better for written word than spoken i find with science a lot of times yes yeah. it's like i was trying to read something about i think languages and it did not come through um in audiobook i just yeah. gave up it was fine like i i definitely would listen to one of his books again if i couldn't get it in paperback because i love his writing but i'd probably look for the paper copy first for his okay. so yeah and then i also purchased um michelle obama's becoming oh have you listened to that one yet? no it's because i've only got three hours left on this one you want um, to get it finished. so i want to finish it first but that that'll one, be my next that one that one looks really interesting yeah and i think she's a fascinating woman yeah um so i think that'll be a really good read cool and then i can still knit and and listen at the same time. Well, I have one more book that I've been reading. So I just started this. This is We Have Always Been Here by Samra Habib. <laughs> um, and the, ta or the subtitle is A Queer Muslim Memoir. And it's really interesting. Uh, she grew up in Pakistan, but she was a part of a minority sect that was, um, that was declared non-Muslim. And so they were being persecuted. Um, so her family moved to Canada when she was, I think, 12 or so. And and then, of course, she was bullied here and, and everything. But it's really interesting. I've got to the point where she's 16 and getting um, an arranged marriage. Um, but it is really, really good. It's part of the Canada Reads. So I don't know... Um, Anyone not from Canada has never heard of this, but it's uh, it's a thing that they do every year and they pick five well-known Canadian people. Um, so this year there's like a musician, a few actors, a couple writers, and they each pick a book to um, that they, you know, that sure. they fight for basically. It's a it's an all out brawl. No, it's really not. It's really but not. It's, it's the Canadian version of an all out brawl. Excuse me. Um, I'd like to recommend this, this book. One. Yeah, and I think this year's theme is like one book to unite Canada or or something like that. About it's really interesting. Uniting different cultures. Well, yeah, and like people just and... pe making people be aware. And I was reading the the list, and I think I want to read all five of them this year. So they do a long list, and then they shorten it down to this five books. Yeah. And. Um, there's some really interesting looking ones. There's this one, and there's a novel set in 
St. John's, Newfoundland, and there's um, another memoir that's a uh, native guy. Uh, it's about addiction and recovery and stuff, and it looks really good. And I think there's... That reminds me, last year, Birdie won one of the Canada Reads, and he it didn't, didn't really... win it. It wasn't last year, I don't think. Either. Oh, it was on the short list, maybe. Yes. Um, but you know what? Uh, it looked interesting, but so many people who read it said it was just... It wasn't the greatest writing. Oh, really? I was... Yeah. I was thinking... And now maybe it just depends. I mean, everybody has different taste in books. Yeah. I was so. thinking I might try that one because it showed up on Audible now. Ah, we have like three copies in the store if you want to read it. Oh. I <laughs> anyway. We, we have a few books. <laughs> Canada Reads. Uh, some years I'm just like, oh, none of them interest me. And some years I'm like, I want to read them all. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and they, they duke it out on the radio in March sometime. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and then people vote for the one they want to, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm really, really enjoying this. I highly recommend it. Got I got a book from, the, from library. the library. I did. I got a couple books from the library. You have a book from the library, a book from here, and a book on audiobook. Two You're being times. very, yes. like, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. patron. I had to patron. laugh because... Patronizing is not the wrong patronizing. Word. You, are, you are a patron <laughs> of many different diverse patronage. <laughs> um, I actually had to laugh because in this book is um, a, a sticker from Indigo. Oh. Uh, Indigo Chapters um, is our like national chain that I used to work for, um, and it it was the the purchase. Um, oh, they forgot the purchase this, slip. This, in the well, book. it's like the shipping label, but yeah, yeah the purchase slip for the library. <laughs> so I'm using it as a bookmark. But yeah highly recommend that does sound fascinating yeah i was actually thinking as i was reading it i was like you would really like this yeah oh and one of the books on the long list this year was the um the one about the trans activist family oh um uh, love lives here love lives here yeah. by amanda jete knox yes um, hers made it was, the long list. It was fabulous. Hers made the long list. So I was she really also impressed. made like a bunch of awards, like um, like top twenty five most influential people in Toronto. Yeah. And, like yeah. Um, she was fabulous. Like coming as an activist, but also as an author and as a mom, like coming to terms with the changes in her family and coming to terms with what that meant for not just the people who came out, but for her and her marriage and yeah. and all the work she does to make other people safe and raise awareness and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's, it was really good. It's really interesting because I kind of have this issue where I don't really like Canadian fiction. Some Canadian fiction, totally. But the, the, the things that are considered like Canadian fiction, like Margaret Atwood. And, and Anne-Marie MacDonald. And Anne-Marie MacDonald. Okay, I adore Anne-Marie MacDonald as an actress. Um, and But her novels, I just, I, I find... The style is very dark and depressing yes i find a lot of canadian <laughs> fiction dark and depressing whereas canadian memoirs i mean they're depressing because oh my god she's about the same age as me and it was bullied massively and i think back to like i grew up here which is you know a, t a city of ten thousand people <laughs> in northern bc and we had you know one vietnamese boy in our class and and some native kids and no one black no like it was such a white yeah white community and i am sure those kids got bullied i mean everybody got bullied but for different things yeah but yeah and i just you know <sighs> makes you realize how easy we have it yes yes but yeah um but yeah i don't really like canadian like handmaid's tale <laughs> sorry oh sorry. some I'm people are gonna shoot know, you for that one i know i know and the one thing i find interesting about a lot of canadian fiction she seems like a fabulous speaker though um okay. have you seen so she's doing a master class now mm, yeah, on no. masterclass.com and her intro to it like even just her intro to the class is fascinating really yeah so um, i find her interesting because she definitely writes sci-fi fantasy but she absolutely does not like that label mm. she's very very much like ooh, genre fiction is the devil <laughs> whereas i like genre fiction but yeah 
So that's funny. I, Canadian, I heard that. Canadian fiction is is really interesting. Um, I I do like that the place is very much a character in most Canadian fiction. Like Canadian novels set on the prairies are so totally different from Canadian stories set in the Maritimes yeah. or French. Oh, like, like Quebec. The, the Louise Penny that I read, the yeah. town of Three Pines, is, which is very clearly in the Eastern townships, yeah. um, is so very much a part. Yeah. Well, and it makes sense because, I mean, where we come from is so much a part of us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just find it really interesting. I've got to, I've got to read some Quebec novels. I think you'd like the Louise Penny. Oh, I'm sure I would. I, just, I haven't really been in a mystery mood lately. But think of it like the Shetlands. Like you yeah, like that kind of mystery. But I didn't really like reading the books. Mm -hmm. I really liked, I, I like watching mysteries on TV. But less reading them. Yeah. I don't know, just lately. I Because I used to, I read... Like every Anne Perry and uh, yeah. every Elizabeth Peters and <laughs> that's because um, those are awesome. Yeah. If you but, haven't read Elizabeth Peters, <laughs> you have to read Elizabeth Peters. Specifically, oh. the Amelia Peabodies. They're amazing. She is a kick-ass um, archaeologist, old spinster turned archaeologist yeah. uh, that excavates um, and digs in Egypt, and she like, I, They're she's fun. just awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, but yeah, no, I, I went through a mystery phase. It's like when I was about 12, I went through a World War II phase. Yep. And now I never want to read another book set during World War II. <laughs> and lately, that's all that's been coming out. There have been a lot of them, for like, sure. Like, so many. Like, last year, that was the theme of the books coming out. <laughs> all of the big name ones. Yeah. Last couple of years, actually. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I think it's just because World War II just depresses me. Well, I mean, it's depressing. Then again, I'm reading um, nonfiction that totally has to do with World War Two. Yeah, like right now. But it's, it's talking different. About... I think reading yeah. just fiction set in that time yeah. is different than reading a book about what actually happened. Yeah, but yeah. So that's my oh okay. Our other culture consumed. NCIS. So I actually had we to. We watched check. a little bit. Of NCIS. <laughs> I had to check our last podcast to see if we had started NCIS yet. And we hadn't. So we did that We did that podcast on January 5th. I know it didn't get up then, but that's when we yeah, did it. Yeah, I think it got up around the 12th or so. Yeah. Uh, so since January 5th, we have watched 187 episodes of NCIS. Um, so I used to watch it ages ago uh, and then just kind of stopped. Petered out. Apparently about 10 years ago. Because it's on season 17 now. But so we picked it back up in season nine because that's when, what, I don't know, Amazon Prime, I think, has it on from season nine to season 13. So we watched those. So we watched nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Because we bought we are a couple of episodes or a couple, couple of seasons. A couple seasons, yeah. Um, we are five episodes from the end of season 16. And then there's just season 17 left. It's so good. We've just been mainlining They've been it. really good. Yeah. And it's so funny watching them so quickly. Because you, you see the something's... characters well, age well, like you and, would and never. You see, and you see Tim drop, like, get, like, so skinny and sallow. Yeah. And then he gains weight and then he gets the, the, the goatee beard. and yeah. the slicked back hair. And, and, like, people leave and people join. And, yeah, I really miss Abby, but I really like Casey. Yes, me too. I love um, Casey. And but I think they did a good write off, like a good yes, send off for Abby. They did. Um I I knew she left the show, but I didn't yeah. know how or Well the I knew everyone who left it because my mom kept me yeah, updated. But it was a really good send off. Yeah. Like they they did the character justice and I think it was a good send off for the actress as well. And Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and we've been really, really well mainlining and CIS. Yeah. So 187 episodes times 42 minutes an episode. That's a lot it's way of too much time. It's a lot of hours. That's why I've gotten all this knitting done. And that's why I haven't. Because you can't work on a new design and doing the math for it when you're watching mm -hmm. TV. And then so I pick up something like this and I'm knitting and I'm knitting. And then I'm like, ooh, <laughs> what's going to happen there? 
and then huh. I go, oh, right, knitting. Right. Keep knitting, <laughs> keep knitting, yep. So, yeah. we have also been, uh, okay, so when I get into something, I tend to get into something. Um, so we started... Um, I don't know where she's going with this. <laughs> we started emailing all our vendors oh, for the Fiberfest. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. And so I've been having weird Fiberfest dreams. Um, <laughs> like last night, somebody, I, I don't know who they were. Their name was Amber and I knew them well. Um, <laughs> I don't know an Amber. <laughs> I don't either. But they were helping us lay out the booths mm -hmm. for the Fiberfest and they weren't measuring them properly and I was not oh. happy. <laughs> and then you were mocking me about being anal and then Rebecca came along and said, you're not getting the tape anymore and stole it from Amber and like she was going to retape everything and oh. it was it Anxiety was very dreams. funny. But, but I didn't wake up stressed. I no, woke up good. laughing. Well, like, that's, that's good. It was just like... you're not allowed to be stressed <laughs> about the Fiber Fest this year. I, I'm not. Because we know what we're doing this year and we know what <laughs> yeah. to expect. Yeah. Like, Sure we do. But but we do. Like, yeah. we know that the floors aren't going to be marked off and we have to do that ourselves. Yeah. Last year, that wouldn't have it been stressful be. if we knew we had to do it. Yeah. Um. So mm -hmm. I think it'll be great. And, yeah. we're and very, we're it's very super excited. exciting. Yeah. yeah. So last Sunday in April, if you can make it, please come. It should be loads of fun. Yeah. Oh, and I, I mentioned this on the last podcast, I think, but if you missed it, the local uh, George Dawson Inn is doing a discount. If you are coming for the Fiber Fest on April 25th or 26th, if you mention that you're here for the Fiber Fest when you book, you'll get a discount, which is $100 a night, um, which is a fair discount off their regular rate and one of the cheaper rates in town for one of the decent hotels nice it's old but it's yeah. clean and it's comfortable yeah um so it doesn't look fancy at all but it's a nice comfortable yeah there's hotel. kind of there's kind of the the scuzz buckets and then the decent hotels yeah and like there's and nothing in between all three star hotels like they're yeah, all, all the exactly the same yeah some are just newer than the gdi yeah. the george dawson inn has been here my yeah. entire life but and um somebody was talking about one of our um customers who drives in is who isn't from dawson on saturday i Ooh. think was talking about maybe we could all get together at the GDI on the Saturday night or something. And I was like, oh, well, that doesn't work for the vendors because we're setting up our booths. But I hope something like that wor works out for the people who come from yeah. out of town. Like, that'd be, that'd be fun. And we'll, well have... you know, we could open up the store for them. Oh, and have a knit night, like a knit night here. Yeah. Oh, we totally should. Yeah, but we'd have to, like, send someone here while we're setting up. Or you can be here while I steal the volunteers and set up anyway we'll figure out something or daniel well, yeah we could pay daniel to be here yeah. yeah except she knows nothing about yarn and is allergic to wool but or shell shell knows even less about yarn but she'll talk your ear off yes yeah okay <laughs> there may be a knit night stay I tuned a, i have an itchy nose make it uh, stop chop it off mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry itchy nose um somebody is shuffling just outside our window and the nearly surprised me what are you doing? I was being a performing seal earlier and she was laughing at me. Gee, I can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah, okay, now we're getting crazy, so, well, I'm getting crazy. So it's time to end. Punch dunk on uh, yarn fumes. <laughs> oh, time for time more for drugs. Advil. We um, both, yeah, yeah, anyway, we're sick. <laughs> I'm, but we're I'm, sick. I'm okay. I, I You're looked, the one. <laughs> I looked and I started and I was like, I'm so tired. Yeah, I'm like... <laughs> And she's, I'm like, okay, open your eyes. And she's like, like, no, not that, not, no, no. <laughs> not like that? That's scary. Don't, don't scare away our I'm awake. Yeah. <laughs> We're here. Okay, bye. Bye. See you next time. Mwah.